Today I'll be wearing the GWG1000MH the Maharshi Collaboration Mod Master since we are gonna have a look at a model that is closely related to the Modman family and that would be this one. This is the G800 model. What's so special about the watch in comparison to other G-Shock watch is that despite having a bracelet construction like this the module in there is actually the one that is operating a Mudman G9000 series which I believe a lot of you guys have seen and I believe that model is still available up today you could buy one even on brand new sitting on shelves so if you like that model which I'm sure a lot of you guys are you're gonna like this one as well because the module are just the same but the construction aren't I've done a video as well in regard a GW-850 a watch that look exactly that the one that we're gonna have a look today including this button construction and such but this time it came in a non solar powered version and the colorway is different if you go to G-Shock Japan websites you cannot find this model at all because this specific one was released outside of Japan the JDM version Japan domestic market version was released in the year 2006 with a reference number of G w-800 that one is solar powered and wave scepter whereas this one is the non-wave scepter non-solar powered version but it does has dual illuminator like the g9000 moment those are some basic things the uh, summarize of what this watch are all about but if you're still curious on what you're seeing let's have a look so we're gonna have a look at the metal construction on the front to protect the bezel next we'll have a silver stainless steel light button at the front when you press it up it will glow the EL in green since it has dual illuminator it will light up the watch digital display including the faceplate around that in white so they have two layers of electro illumination sheets placed uh, underneath that moving on to the side we'll have rectangular shaped button with some slight uh, angle over there Let's have a quick rundown on what the watch could do. First of all, you do have a lot of indicator on the watch face. Day, date and time display, alarm indicator over there, PM or AM time, auto light function, mute for the button operation, and a lot of numbering on the side. Those are for the stopwatch feature. Pressing mode button once will bring us into the first stopwatch. I like how the digital display is really clear and since it is in positive, it makes the experience of using the watch a lot better plus it has the white watch face so I mean this watch is very very easy to use uh, it has a range to 1000 hours you'll have two stopwatch actually both of them could run at the same time thus the animation is down here and at the bottom there and next we'll have a countdown timer to 24 hour range with auto repeat and time keeping as you're using this and then you'll have five alarm including snooze and then you'll have a signal for hourly chime and each alarm could be set up to a specific date to become a monthly, daily or a yearly alarm. Lastly, we'll bring us into the world time mode where you could scroll through um, 48 cities and I believe 29 time zones if I'm not mistaken. Um, while using this feature, notice that you could see the stopwatch running in the background with those graphics animations at the top and at the bottom. Price mode button again will bring you back to home time keeping and the graphics animation for the watch for to match with the seconds counter will be the one in this ring over here it's quite tiny and i like it because it didn't use a lot of space unlike some uh, models on the market and there's an indicator over here for flash alert on roughs basically when the timer is off or the alarm is off the watch will flash out the illuminator at the same time it will beeps so those are the functions if you recall back to the G9000 it is exactly the same except the watch face design is slightly different it is not as rugged I believe but it matches with the overall idea of this model it looks a little bit more classy not as rugged as the G9000 and this I believe that simple design and I like how the fit as well because it is bracelet you could adjust it up and you don't have any uh, extra extended tongue at all it came in stainless steel material like most G-Shock watch at that year in 2006 keep in mind this one in 2006 and the price 
I'm guessing will be around 100 bucks as well if you could find them, depending on the condition of course, but usually uh, they are pretty hard to find. In my case, I bought the one in use and you can see a lot of use mark, especially on the resin parts. Well, obviously on the metal parts as well, but it's still holding up very well, despite being beaten up already. And that's the thing about G-Shock. You could beat it up, you could give zero maintenance and it still works up to this day. So the fit is great. I don't have to sh uh, talk it even further. You could see it by yourself. And the finishing is also really nice. I mean, if you bought it brand new, you could see it even better, but in this case, it's already used up. So this is how it will end up looking if you beat up your uh, G800 in the future. So if you don't want yours to look out like this, take care of your G-Shock watch. But that is entirely up to you guys. And uh, if you look on the back plate now, let's see, there are some more specs to cover. It has Casio, operates on 3031 module, G800D, stainless steel, back made in Thailand and water resistant to 20 bar like most models. It had the same exact construction and on the watch look design, seems like it, but I haven't tried it yet to uh, to plug a modman band on here. But regardless, this is a G800D. If you like him, you like it. If you don't like it, at least you know what to expect if you find this out there. I hope you guys learned something in this video. Thank you very much for watching. This is Jesha and I'm...